Let's talk about the proper pivot selection for quicksort. So during this quicksort algorithm, we need to select a pivot element. And based on that pivot element, we're going to split it into two arrays, the array of elements that are smaller and the array of elements that are larger. Right? So if we look at the example uh, 246, uh, 1, 3, 5, we could pick the last element as our pivot here. And if we were to pick the last element as our pivot here, which is probably one of the most common implementations of quicksort, if we were to pick the last element as our pivot here, we're going to end up splitting this into two different arrays. Uh, all the elements that are smaller than five, which is two, four, one, and three. We have five kind of in the middle here. And then all the elements that are greater than five, which is just the element six, right? Now, this is OK. Um, in a ideal situation, we'd probably split this nice and evenly between the two. So we'd ideally be picking probably four or three. Um, granted, we don't want to search this entire thing just to find out what the middle number is. Um, that will make this, um, you know, the runtime for this algorithm much longer. So we don't want to go about doing that. So um, what could we pick? We can pick the last pivot. Uh, the last element, uh, like we have in this example here. Uh, this works reasonably well if all of the elements are, are nice and shuffled. We could also pick the very first element, which also, it's very similar to picking this, uh, the very last one. We could just pick two as our pivot point. We get one on the left side, two, and then all the elements that are greater than two um, for our right side array. We could also try and pick some like, uh, some sort of like average or median uh, element. And we could do that by sort of looking at, you know, pick a couple different elements and just pick one. So for example, we could do something like, let's look at the last element, the first element, and then maybe one of these middle ones, uh, the six or the one, right? In this case, we'd say, well, let's look at two, one, and five. We just sort of look at a middle element and pick of those three, which one is the middle? So we could say, well, let's pick this first one, too, because it's in the middle of one, two, and five, right? It's kind of like a, a quick and dirty way to, to pick a almost like average type element that's, uh, that's in here, right? Now, the reason why we would do this is because we can actually end up with that really bad uh, worst case runtime of uh, O of n squared if we have a sorted array. So imagine we have this case of one, two, three, four, five, six, and we've gone with this partitioning plan, or we've gone with this pivot selection plan, excuse me, of last or first. If we go with last or first, and we have a sorted array that looks like this, we're going to pick essentially the worst possible pivot element that we could. So let's go with the plan that we did here when we picked the very last element. We picked the six, and what we end up doing is we end up splitting this into an array of one, two, three, four, five, that ends up being like our left array. And then we have this element six and our right array ends up being nothing. And then we do our, you know, our pivot selection again, and we select five, which is again, the worst case scenario here, because, you know, we're essentially not splitting this array at all. We end up with an array of one, two, three, four, and then here's five. And we haven't picked anything for the right side here, right? This case here ends up being our worst case of n squared, right? And this is the case that we want to avoid. This is why there's this idea of, well, maybe we could pick an average. Maybe we pick an element that's just like a random element through here as opposed to picking like the first or last. Because when we go with one of these selections of first and last, it means that sorted arrays like this end up giving us this worst case runtime. Whereas sort of these arrays here, when they are unsorted, give us this, you know, the one that we are shooting for, which is like the n log n, right? And in practice, this is the one that ends up being quicker than merge sort. So our pivot selection is incredibly important. What's the right answer here? What's the best answer here? There isn't one. And unfortunately, we don't know if the array is sorted when it's given to us. So we can't really make a good judgment call when the function is actually running. We kind of just need to pick one of these implementations, go with it, and kind of hope for the best. Um, in general, you know, if your array is already sorted, Ideally, don't call quicksort on it again, right?
we never know that for sure. So um, we just kind of do our best to sort of avoid this, this situation.